so welcome back everyone. It's a very exciting day today. We've um, uh, got a little update on the adventure van. I am heading down the mountain into town uh, to pick up uh, the bed from the upholsterer. I found uh, there's a, a, just this charming little Asian lady that uh, has an upholstery shop now about an hour away from here uh, that I dropped off uh, the panels to uh, that she up upholstered and they, I'm super excited to see them. I, I, I don't really know what to expect but um, just judging from some of her other work uh, she does just does beautiful beautiful work very very talented seamstress or upholsterer what, what do you call someone uh, let alone a female upholsterer person uh, it doesn't matter anyway uh, let's let's go check that out It's beautiful. Oh, Isn't good. that nice? You do such nice work. Yeah, then you can roll. I figured that will go in here, so at the door. Yep. Okay. Turned out pretty good, didn't it? Man, she did a great job on the upholstery. It looks just like factory. So I'll, I'll bring you in here and show you kind of how I did it. But the, uh, the, the, the design here is... Uh, three panels so we can take it out I can take them out uh, really quickly here I'll bring you over here closer isn't that beautiful man there's a lot of work she put into that look at the detail the contour I chose this uh, commercial grade uh, a wool blend of um, fabric that uh, is warm, it's soft, soft to the touch, and it's supposed to be really durable. And underneath I had her put um, some really high quality, the highest density foam uh, that she could get because we like to sleep on a really firm bed. But look at the detail and, and how well that she did that. Just turned out so nice. It's four inches thick and uh, the bed turned out to be almost a full queen. Here's the bottom side, of course, we did the aluminum frame. Now, to secure the cushions to the, uh, to the frame, I used a, a half inch uh, veneered plywood. Uh, so it's a high density plywood uh, that's T-nutted. So these stainless steel screws, there's about a dozen of them in each panel, go through and lock into T-nuts, met metal connectors, which are really good. good. I, mean, I see a lot of kind of motorhome type of stuff where they just take like drywall screws and thread it into the plywood. That's, that's not a very good way to do it. It, it. Over time, it loosens up and it tears out. This way, it can be, these can be taken off uh, and they need to be recovered or repaired or whatever, and it's just never gonna pull out. And to secure it to the, uh, to the frame rails on the, on the transit, I use these 5 16 rib nuts uh, with these knobs, uh, these plastic knobs on here. So to remove the, each panel, I just have to take out, just undo these uh, thumb screws and the panels come right out and we can store them or use one or use two or, or stack them up on top of each other or, or just uh, not, not use them at all in case we have to lo load something big in there. Another part of the design that I am really pleased with is uh, the way that this, these panels mount on here. This is something that I came up with myself. Um, I, I don't, didn't want any squeaking, and I'm glad, happy to report that there is zero squeaking. I, I, I locked it all down and drove it home, um, and that's uh, on account of these um, high-density plastic rails that I put inside the channel. So those snap tight inside there, and then they ride on top of this channel right here, um, giving it a bearing surface. So there's no metal to metal contact, it's isolated. And I also had her overhang these cushions uh, a quarter of an inch so that th these are tight. They, it takes some effort, you have to kind of press them together, uh, but there's, there's not a seam or a crack that you're gonna fall into. And there's no metal uh, coming in contact with each other, which would cause a squeak. So it's r absolutely rock solid, no squeaking, and it sits on top of this vinyl. Uh, track kind of this C track here uh, just worked out so so good. Here's a little better angle, but these so these bearings fit in here nice and tight so they don't come out. 
snap in there. Here's the other side. Gorgeous. This is exactly why I went with the aluminum, because these panels are not heavy, they're manageable. They don't weigh very much and they're easy to move around. I don't suspect I'd, I'll put them in or take them out very often, uh, but it's to me it was worth the effort to uh, to put them, to, to make them modular like this so we could. So I have an option. I mean, if uh, that day comes you want to need to go get a refrigerator or a major appliance or something really big. Uh, my old van, I, I just couldn't do that because the bed, it just it would take hours to take it out. Uh, but this one, not so. Um, and not only that, but we don't always want a full, may not always want a full bed in here. Uh, I'll show you what uh, uh, the other reason for the three panel. So just a quick review of the layout. So the front seats will, those will be on swivels. I'll, I'll order those here soon. And those will swivel around so they face uh, the, the two jump seats in the back that we put in because I've des designed this it's got to be uh, able to sleep and to seat four people comfortably so I've got a really clever uh, uh, hinge system kind of in my head how I'm gonna we'll make a fold up uh, panel right there or table right there so that these seats will spin around and then we'll have a nice living area that we could all sit at uh, and eat and play cards or games or, or whatever that'll be the living area now of course then we've got the bed back here and an important aspect of it is to have um, um, some, some move around room here. So what, one of the things that we're gonna be uh, spending a lot of time in, in the van is taking it skiing. And what's really nice, especially when you have kids and you're getting ready and, and is to have a place that you can pull up there. And it's not being a rush, it's hard to put ski boots on and deal with all the clothes and all the gears when you get three or four people uh, in a little car. Uh, you end up doing it outside if it's snowing or the weather's bad. It's just really a drag. Or trying to drag a bunch of bags and stuff up to the lodge is just not. It's just not very practical. So what we can do is uh, we can just take this panel loose, for example, if we're not going to be spending the night, and we can stack these up. We could just stack them up on the back and just throw it, throw a uh, like a kayak strap around them, and they could just live there. So if we want the bed, we can just roll it out. Uh, we have the bed, but we also uh, each time these panels are 24 inches at each. Uh, we can take one out and that gives us an extra two foot of walk around living space for gears, bags, skis, or we can do two of them. Um, but what I think I'd probably do is probably just remove this one panel and then sit it towards the back and then we, we have lots of room there. We got, you know, seven feet, six, seven feet area right there um, where everyone can kind of uh, get around and put your boots on the stuff. There'll be a, a bench right along the side here uh, to sit on. So, um, yeah, I think it's... It's, it was a lot more work to do this, uh, the three panels set up, but uh, I'm so glad that I did it. Would have been, I was really tempted just to make one big monolithic bed and, and just live with it, but uh, this is so, so many, it gives you so many more options and um, it's so much more versatile. I'll show you underneath too. So as you can see here from the front there, so it's, it's very clean. Uh, it's, there's no, uh, nothing really exposed it looks bad I, I put a nice heavy piece of quarter inch across here uh, to give it rigidity and stiffness where everyone's going to be landing on the bed and sitting it's rock solid and then underneath here you can see there's the those are the knobs right there focus a little dark under here those are the knobs to hold everything in place but very very clean the the uh, bench and the box that hold all the water and the hot water heater, the Insta Hot and all that stuff, the Fender Well box will go over this, and then of course um, lock into the eye eye channels. Those are the eye channels that they use for airplane seats, um, and it gives me the ability to mount everything solidly to the body um, and not have to worry about things coming loose uh, in an accident. Uh, those are all tied in with rib nuts, uh, quarter twenty screws, rock rock solid, even it way exceeds factory attachments in my opinion and then of course the plywood panel there will be that will be upholstered uh, in the same fabric as the bed uh, so it'll be nice and soft and clean uh, but yeah I think it, it I think it turned out really really good it looks nice I had her do the fabric underneath um, so we have that continuity um, and there's the other panel over there but very very pleased with the three panel bed here you can see the how they tie in there, it just sits over top and 
no squeaking. Just thrilled. I it's really it's really kind of uh, satisfying to you know come up with something in your mind and I, I just I've spent countless hours you know thinking about this before I started building it and and many times when you're in the prototype stage of things like this there's always when you get to the end of the job there's a little disappointment oh I wish that I would have done this or I wish I would have done that but I can honestly say I I don't I wouldn't I don't think I would do any, anything different on this. Not at all. I just uh, am thrilled with the way it turned out. It's super lightweight. It's super strong. Um, it looks nice. It's easy to take in, put in, to take out. And uh, yeah, great, great system. So the next part is even more, it's, it's even more exciting. It's going to be one of the best parts. Um, there's a company in Germany. Uh, that makes a tiny little gas generator called an S-bar and it will um, it's going to tie into the factory tank there's actually a port on the top of it we can run a little fuel line and connect to and it will run this little generator uh, that will mount underneath or inside uh, and it'll exhaust out the bottom and it's I mean it's it's tiny it's like the sat it's like the size of a one of those big beer cans uh, and what that will do is that it, it's a furnace and so we'll, it will run off the fuel in the gas tank, uh, but the, there's a little tube in there that will only allow it to pick up, it to pick up fuel down to three quarters of a tank. So if you were to, for example, leave the furnace running and set the temperature in there and you wanted to keep your van at 70 degrees inside and you forgot about it, it won't run all your gas out and then you have no gas to get back to the station. So it'll only take it down to three quarters. The nice thing about it is there's no propane, uh, there's no external fuels, there's none of that fuss. It just ties in beautifully to the to the factory fuel system and so what that will allow us to do it, it's a couple different things but the first stage of it is we'll have it'll be a furnace inside so that when we go skiing or, or go somewhere we can set that up we can have it set at 68 degrees whatever we like and it will stay there that way for us uh, it will and then we can come in for lunch we don't have ice on the vehicle we don't have everything being cold and with kids you know that, that's nice so uh, that's something uh, we're going to be doing here in a couple days. I, I just got the email that it came in. We're going to go pick it up. We're going to talk to the guy. Uh, it, it gets better than that, though, because with the S-Bar, um, there's this really clever, uh, you'll find out here soon enough, there's this guy, guy that I met that's a couple hours from here that's building a heat exchanger that uh, works with the S-Bar. So not only does the S-Bar, is it a furnace, but it's also going to provide for us on-demand hot water at one gallon a minute. So we could have unlimited hot water in the van um, for showers or for just for cooking or hand washing and stuff uh, that is, it would never runs out, we'd never run out. You could essentially, we'll, we'll put a one gallon a minute nozzle, it'll be on the back, it'll be kind of an outside shower, I'm not going to do an inside one, uh, but if we were hooked to like a garden hose um, and not running off the tank water, we could have indefinite hot water up, up for that amount as long as the, the S-Bar is running. So it's, I mean, it is an awesome awesome system um, and uh, I'll be sharing that here very soon so what else was there oh so a lot of folks ask about four-wheel drive so the Ford Transit vans uh, they've been, these have been available now for two years uh, they do not offer a four-wheel drive uh, four-wheel drive option however there's two companies that I'm aware of in the country that do a factory authorized four-wheel drive conversion on these one is uh, Quigley uh, of course, you've probably heard of Quigley. The other, very fortunately, is in Northwest Portland called uh, Quad Van. And if you remember my dad's sportsmobile, they did the four-wheel drive system on that, and they do impeccable work. It is so good that it looks like factory. They use all factory parts uh, off of uh, F-Series pickups. And so we are um, planning on having the four-wheel drive put on this in the spring. So uh, the reason why it, 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 we're, there's a waiting list, these vans are so popular right now. I mean, they're, they're just exploding. Um, and you see, you see them everywhere now, especially where we live, uh, that uh, they're backed up. So the soonest we could get on the list to get the four-wheel drive installed was, um, well, what would they say? It was like seven, six or seven months. So that is coming up um, soon. So yes, to ask, answer your question, we will be putting four-wheel drive on it. It's just uh, we're, we're on the waiting list. So. What else was there? Oh, one last thing let me show you. This is something that I could probably install now, uh, and this is LED 
strip lighting, really high quality, nice stuff. This is exterior grade, it's rated to be outside, but I'm gonna put it inside. And because that we put the, the bed in, that creates a kind of a dark area underneath of it. And that's primarily where we store a lot of our gear and equipment. So I'm gonna run these LED strips uh, six feet long under there, I'll tuck those kind of so they'll be inconspicuous. Um, and then these will be tied in with the door system. So when we open up the door or we hit the key fob, that these will come on with the factory lights uh, and light up that whole underneath uh, area. So I've done that in my old van, it was really useful. I just used you know, old school incandescents, but I've never, I haven't used these before, but look at all those LEDs in there. Isn't that cool? Just amazing, amazing what technology is, is bringing us. All right, so that's it for today. Don't forget to click the thumbs up on the videos. It really helps. Uh, what do I have coming up? I've got, uh, I've got a really uh, interesting blacksmithing project in my, uh, in my mind that I'm flushing out here over the next few hours uh, that we might do tomorrow. I don't know yet. I picked up the material for it today. So I have, I think I have everything that I need, but um, it, it's going to be kind of a, maybe a short two or three part series. Uh, that uh, I, I think you'll enjoy it. I, I think it'll turn out really, really nice. It's uh, um, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. All right. Thanks for watching. Click the thumbs up, and we'll see you guys on the next video.